Hello everyone, I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving break and keeps having a good weekend before Cyber Monday, a little Black Friday shopping. Um, I just wanted to get this video out, I'm going to go over a few things here, I'm going to go over some Modern Warfare graphic settings, then I'm going to go into the gameplay settings for the game, then I'm going to go into how I've set up my AMD graphics card for Modern Warfare, and lastly I'm going to go over if you're looking to get an eGPU for your Mac, uh, certain graphics cards, different eGPU prices, and uh, what to look for. So let's hop right into it. If you guys enjoy this video, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Most of the people that are watching my videos aren't subscribed. If it does help you, please help me out and subscribe. I'm here to help you though, so if you do have any questions about this video, about why I'm doing something, about why I like a certain graphics card, um, feel free to comment and just let me know what's going on. So, I just want to start off first. You want to make sure your game is on full screen. Full screen borderless lets you tab out, but it will affect your FPS. Uh, your display adapter you obviously want on your eGPU or your GPU if you're using a normal computer. <coughs> your screen refresh right now you want to set to whatever is the monitor you're playing on. So if you're playing directly off your MacBook you want to have it set at 60 because 60 is the highest you can get on your MacBook screen. But if you're using like a 144 hertz or 240 you want to set to that for this setting here. Now the render resolution I think they fixed it to where when you first go into the game it doesn't put you at like 150 resolution. They were having that issue where people were like, wow, why is my FPS so much lower? Because you weren't actually playing at 1080p or 1440 or whatever they wanted to play at. So make sure this is always on 100 for your display resolution. <clears throat> I personally play at 1080p. Um, V-Sync now. V-Sync, I have it disabled. It greatly affects your FPS. It's going <clears> to <throat> make sure that your frames, if they're not fully in, <clears throat> they're not going to show up. So like... If you are having um, FPS issues, you will have the screen tearing like you see on the uh, left picture on the screen, but I haven't had any issues with it ever. Uh, <laughs> so I always have VSync off. Now the custom frame rate limit, so I set mine to 240. I don't ever really get 240, but just because that's what my monitor can get, I put it at it. Um, the menu custom frame rate limit, this is why you have it on custom instead of unlimited. Um, so if you have it on custom, it's going to limit the amount of frames, limit the amount of usage from your GPU and your CPU when you're just sitting at the menu, like right now, and I'm not doing anything. NVIDIA highlights I have off because I use OBS. Um, I don't think many people actually use NVIDIA highlights. The shaders installation, I've had to reinstall my shaders a few times just because I felt I was having performance issues, but it's really easy to do. <clears throat> The uh, display gamma just depends if you're playing on a monitor, it's this one. If you're playing on a TV, it's the other one, the BT-1886. Now, we're going to get into like the texture resolution here stuff, so it's going to depend for what you're actually playing on, what type of graphics card. If you're using like a GTX 2080, I mean you're probably not even watching this video, but then you're going to want to have your texture resolution set to high. But between high and normal? I don't really tell a difference and it really affects performance when you're going between high and normal. So what I've noticed is having it on high compared to very low is about 9 FPS difference. It's about 5 FPS difference having it on normal and low is like 2. So if you are having issues, put it on low. Don't put it on very low because very low it's just bad. Like I d the game just doesn't look good, to be honest. Um, so I put it. I actually play on normal, and I most of the time I don't even really tell that there's an FPS difference because it's so minuscule. Now the uh, texture filter anisotrope. I, I mean, I, I don't really notice. I've tried playing on a high before. It's like four FPS difference, I think. But I don't. I don't really notice it when I'm playing, so I just keep it on low. Uh, same with particle quality, I've never seen a difference between high and low. Uh, bullet impacts and sprays and the tessellation, I both have on low again. I mean, it's preference. I think it only F affects your FPS like one or two for both of them, but if you're trying to maximize FPS, you're just going to want to put them off because eventually these twos and threes, they add up at the end if you have the ball on. 
So now we're going to get into the shadowing and lighting. So the cache spot shadows, cache sun shadows, and shadow map resolution. So the first one here is just how sharp of a shadow you're going to get. Having it on extra compared to normal, I mean, I couldn't tell a difference between it, and it's also not very much of an FPS difference um, between high and extra com or comparing high to normal. But between normal and extra, I did see about a 5 FPS drop. So I keep it on normal because I personally can't tell a difference, and I also don't really care about what the shadows look like when I'm playing. Now these two, the, the cache shadows, I keep them both on because it doesn't really affect your VRAM at all. It's such a minuscule impact, but <clears throat> it will help your game catch the frames more because it's going to remember the shadows that it saw <clears throat> in your game. Now particle lighting, again, it goes all the way up to ultra for this, but I mean on 1080p, between low and ultra, I'm not really seeing that much of a difference. The game still looks good. The I'm not I'm not really affected by particle lighting. Maybe if you're playing in 4K, having it on ultra compared to low will make a difference. But on 1080p, I haven't seen a difference. <clears throat> so now these next few things are going to actually affect your FPS a decent amount. So I have them both disabled. So ambient occlusion. You have different options here. You got GTAO, MDAO, and both. So if you have it on both, uh, I've seen like a 10 FPS drop. I think this first one's about an 8, and the dynamic object is like a 5. Um, but when you're actually playing the game, you can, I mean, you can just look at these two photos, and if you didn't read what was on the bottom, you wouldn't even be able to tell what the difference is between, between the uh, two images. So that's what makes me want to have it off. Anti-aliasing, now this, I've, I've seen mixed reviews about when to use it, when not to use it. Um, I personally have it off because having it on the highest one, which is the best one, the Filmic SMA AT2X, is about a 22 FPS drop. Same with the SMA AT2X, and this one, the 1X, is about 8 to 10 FPS drop. Um, <clears throat> it does make your game have less jagged edges, but the anti-aliasing in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I feel like doesn't actually do anything. When I'm playing it with it on and with it off, I've tried for a few days to like mix it up when I turn on, not remembering whether I have it on or off, and the game looks the same to me. So I personally just have it off because of the FPS issues. Depth of field, I have off. If you have it enabled, it makes your uh, the images outside of your aim when you're aiming down your gun look blurry, and I don't want any blur when I'm playing, which gets me into the world motion blur and weapon motion blur. It makes it more realistic, so to say, but <clears throat> no one plays Call of Duty for realistic. They play it for the fun of gameplay with your friends. So I have them both disabled. Now, filmic strength goes along with your anti-aliasing. If you have your anti-aliasing off, keep this on one. It'll make it'll avoid any visual noise in your game. Um, I haven't really messed with it having the anti-aliasing on and the film strength lower. So I, I can't really comment on that. <clears throat> but film grain, I have all the way down to zero. It's just like the, the grainy appearance of your game. And I personally don't want any grain at all. I like my game to look clean when I'm looking at opponents from far away. So I have my film grain all the way down to zero. Okay, now I'm going to get into a few gameplay oriented settings. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, field of view. I've seen many mixed feelings about field of view of having it all the way to 120, of having it at 100. Um, I've played on console my whole life, and I always feel like you have less field of view towards like the uh, this 80 level here, as you see on this picture on the right. It, I feel more comfortable playing on 80. I actually think it lowers my FPS a little bit, which to me I feel like it should raise it because there's less image to see comparing it to 100, but it does lower it about 10 FPS for me. Um, I've tried playing on 100 and I just don't like how much I can see side to side. Like, Obviously I enjoy seeing more, but it affects how small objects are from a far distance 
and just for my own personal preference, I would rather have distances farther look larger than be able to see slightly more side to side. So try messing around with this if you have not already and <clears throat> just see what you like. Okay, a few controller settings here. So I play on tactical because it allows you to push down your right stick to slide or to crouch in prone, which is like drop shotting. Um, makes it way easier than actually pressing a button. Or for me, I play with uh, the Xbox Elite controller, so we like pressing a paddle. I just find it easier to push down the right stick. <clears throat> I play on a very high sensitivity, which probably is why I don't enjoy playing on the 100 field of view as much. And I also have the multiplier up higher, so I can, when I'm zoomed in, I'm actually turning a little faster than it wants to. Um, I probably should mess around more with the dynamic curve because maybe that affects it, but I do like how the dynamic curve is more fine aim compared to like the standard or linear, which linear is when if you move your stick right away, your player is going to move the same no matter if you move it a little bit or a lot of it. So <clears throat> now on to aim assist. Aim assist standard feels like Call of Duty to me. When I used um, Precision, I really didn't tell a difference, so that's why I just went back to standard. And focusing is for new players. So if you are new to Call of Duty, I totally recommend checking out the focusing one because I really do think it helps. <clears throat> it's more of a, a slowdown when you're next to the target, so if you are a little like jittery on your stick or your mouse, if you're playing on mouse and keyboard, um, it'll help you stay locked onto the player better. Okay, now I'm gonna go over a few graphic card settings. Um, most of this will be the same correlated to the NVIDIA graphics card, but some of the names are a little different. So if we go up to the gaming here, um, Modern Warfare itself, for me at least, didn't pop up in this, and I like to be able to configure between games. Um, <clears throat> so I had to hit this little add thing and then click on Modern Warfare, and then this pops up. So I go into Modern Warfare, and these are the settings that I've found are the best for FPS, except for the radon anti-lag. If you're really struggling for FPS, turn this off. Um, but for me, it helps with input lag just a little bit. At least, I mean, it probably can't tell that much, but I like to have it on because I feel like it does something. But the rest of these settings are all to boost your FPS to the highest level. So just copy these. <clears throat> Now going into the Wattman, so if you've followed any of my Fortnite videos, I optimized all of my GPU settings for the max FPS. Now however, if you do that for Modern Warfare, you'll find out that your game crashes a lot. Um, there is a lot of issues with the Vega 56 card when you're overclocking and undervolting. Um, maybe not as much with the Nvidia cards, but definitely with AMD cards, they're having a lot more issues with it. So I have my card undervolted just a little bit but I have my frequency still on zero. Um, <clears throat> just the base setting. I have my memory at 800. I think in Fortnite I had it at 935, but 800 I found has the most steady gameplay. Um, no drops, doesn't kick me out of the game. So if you are having issues where you're getting air dev codes, um, definitely try putting your graphics card back to factory settings and it most likely will go away. Fan, I have my fan always going at about 50% and then slowly increasing all the way up to 100% if my card gets that hot. I would say it sits probably around like this range. My card doesn't really get that hot, so it's very nice. Uh, and then you want your power limit all the way up. <clears throat> the more power you have going to your card, the better your card's going to perform. It's not going to be power limited. Um, so that's, these are the settings I recommend for your... <clears throat> graphics card itself if you go to display you just want to check and make sure that you're on full panel over here full panel is going to give you the best fps i think i actually had it on preserve aspect ratio when it when i first downloaded the uh, settings here um, but you definitely want it on full panel okay so now i'm going to go over some of the eGPUs and graphics cards if you're on a laptop right now and you want more graphical performance um, if you have a MacBook Pro without a graphics card, I would say like the 15 inch, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, all the way to 2017, but you're gonna be able to play with about 
obviously the highest you can get on your screen itself which i'm guessing that's what you're playing on is 60 fps and that's what i would say is the max you're going to get you're going to be around 50 to 60 fps playing directly off your computer on like medium to low settings um i would probably have like your textures on normal but everything else on low and you're going to get about 60 fps if you're if you're on a macbook air i really think this game is a lot more graphically ex intensive than fortnite and you're going to want to get an ichi bu well, it's it's really not that expensive i mean obviously expensive is a very generous term because it does cost a decent amount of money but it's not the same as purchasing a whole new computer um <clears throat> you're just buying two things so i'm going to go over those two things right now so two of the um eGPU units that I would recommend are the Razer Core X, which is $299, and the Razer Core X Chroma, which is $399. I personally have the Chroma because of the extra power and the Ethernet cord. Um, I have I have always loved playing Ethernet capabilities because I've had issues with it. So I recommend using that if you're going to spend the money on it. Make sure you check again if you're going to get one right now. That's why I'm putting this video out now for Cyber Monday. <clears throat> Look at all these things. See if it's in your price range and purchase it if you want better FPS on your Mac. I'm also not sponsored by any of these people, by the way. So don't think that. Um, the other one is the Sonet EGFX breakaway box. It's about 250 to 350 depending on the voltage you get. And I'm going to go over the um, some of the GPUs and how much voltage they need <clears throat> uh, later here. So I'll also link in the description, if you're actually looking into them, the exact websites that I use to check. Also, if you have any questions, if you're going to buy, feel free to comment. I'll try to respond as po fast as possible. Um, <clears throat> but just let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so... We're going to get into um, some of the graphics cards. So the one that I use is the AMD RX Vega 56. On <clears throat> All these FPSs that I'm going to list off are on like high settings benchmarked from someone else. Um, <clears throat> the RX Vega 56 um, averaged about 155.5 FPS. The AMD RX 580 which is going to be the best bang for your buck, in my opinion, if you're trying to just get over that hump with your Mac, is 114.7 FPS average, um, which is plenty to play the game. <clears throat> the AMD RX uh, 5700 XT was at 166.6 FPS. And now I'm saying these AMD GPUs first because AMD only works on mac os you can't use an nvidia driver on mac which is awful and it sucks so that's why i personally went with the amd rx vega 56 because it had the highest fps for the cost and i'd be I, it has a smooth transition between mac and windows when i'm switching in between both of them to edit my videos or to do schoolwork. <clears throat> so now if you're using the NVIDIA, which I'm about to, to say uh, um, next, you cannot use it on macOS. I just want to make sure I'm, that's stressed, up, stressed and it's like not recommended to use, but it does work because you are using Boot Camp to play your games. <clears throat> so the first one is the NVIDIA GTX 1080. It's 165.3 FPS, which is comparable to the, the AMD RX 5700. The NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti is about 118 FPS, which is comparable to that RX 580. <clears throat> the NVIDIA GTX 2060 is 161.5, and the 2070 is 180.4 FPS. So these are some cards. I mean, obviously, I'm going to recommend the one that I have because I love it. There's I haven't had any issues with it aside from Modern Warfare where... Because I had it overclocked and undervolted, it was crashing. But that issue was resolved when I turned turned that off and put it back to factory settings for those two things. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Please, please, please subscribe. I very much appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.